This is the second video in the coding interview prep series and today we are going to talk about a question based on number theory and discrete mathematics. So the question goes like this, given a set of n integers, find such a non-empty subset of it such that the sum of the subset's elements is divisible by n. Print the elements of the subset if such a subset exists, otherwise print no if no such subset exists. If there are multiple such subsets, then print any one of them. Now the input is, the first line of input contains an integer n denoting the size of the set. The second line contains n space separated integers representing the elements of set. Make sure you understand the question carefully, otherwise pause the video and read it again. Let's look at test cases for our further understanding. So the test case one is, n is equal to 3 and the elements of the set are 4, 6 and 10. So we can see that uh, 6 is divisible by 3, so the output is going to be 6. Similarly, the second test case is n is equal to 4 and the elements of set are 7, 11, 5 and 6. So the non-empty subset 11, containing elements 11 and 5, if we sum these, we get 16. So it is divisible by 4, that is n, hence the output is 11 and 5. So let's look at the brute force approach to solve this question. I mean, it's brute force approach is quite simple. We generate all 2 power n subsets and we iterate from 1 to 2 raised to power n. And if sum of elements in that subset, in the ith subset, if it is divisible by n, that is sum of elements in subset si mod n is equal to is equal to 0, we print the elements of subset and we simply break. And at the end, we check if the index was greater than 2 power n. So if we, there was no subset which was divisible uh, by n. So we simply print no. So now let's try to get the most optimized solution. So before jumping into the solution, let me familiarize you guys to some annotations which we will be using. Uh, let's denote a1, a2, a3 up to an denote the elements of set S. And let prefix i denote sum of first i elements of set S. That is, prefix i is going to be a1 plus a2 plus so on until ai. That is, the prefix i is going to denote the sum of first i elements of the set. So prefix 0 is going to be 0 that is uh, the sum of empty set prefix 1 is a1 prefix 2 is going to be a1 plus a2 similarly prefix 3 will be a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on until prefix n which is going to be the sum of all the elements in the set that is a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus and so on until a n. Now it is quite easy to see that uh, a l plus a l plus 1 plus a l plus 2 until a r the sum of the elements from index L to R can be obtained by prefix R minus prefix L minus 1 where L is going is less than equal to R. Let's try to get the real intuition behind the solution which is going to help you guys understand it more easily. Now if there exist two indexes L and R such that L is less than R and prefix L mod n is equal to prefix R mod n. then prefix r minus prefix l is going to be divisible by n and if you guys remember from the annotations which uh, I introduced earlier prefix l denotes the sum of first l elements and prefix r denotes the sum of first r elements and prefix r minus prefix l is going to give us the sum of elements from index l plus 1 to r that is a l plus 1 plus a l plus 2 plus a l plus 3 until a r and this is the you can say subset which is going to be divisible by n now what i have said here is uh, basically i can give you guys the mathematical proof for this statement as well and the proof is going to be like this let us assume that prefix l mod n is equal to prefix r mod n which is, is equal to c then we can write prefix l as n into d1 plus c and prefix r can also be written as n into d2 plus c now if we subtract the first equation from the second equation we get prefix r minus prefix l is equal to n into d2 minus n into d1 and c will cancel out so we can take out n common and we get n into d2 minus d1 that is prefix r minus prefix l is divisible by n since you can see that uh, it is basically it is a multiple of n so prefix r minus prefix l and you know what it was denoting is al plus 1 plus al plus 2 until ar now we are we have come to a point where if we can find two indexes l and r such that prefix l mod n is equal to prefix r mod n then we have found the solution now here i make a claim 
The claim is that there will always exist two indexes L and R such that prefix L mod N is equal to prefix R mod N where N plus L is always going to be less than R. And the proof for this claim is see there are N plus 1 values of prefix I that is prefix 0, prefix 1, prefix 2 until prefix N and only N possible residues or you can say remainders for N that is 0, 1, 2, 3 so on until N minus 1. I mean these are the only n remainders we can get if we divide any number by n. So according to the pigeonhole whole principle, the required sub subsegment will is. Let me make you guys visualize this thing so that you can understand it more clearly. So we see that prefix 0 is 0, prefix 1 is a1, prefix 2 is a1 plus a2, prefix 3 is a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on until prefix n which is going to be a1 plus a2 plus a3 until a n. Now. See, these are n plus 1 values uh, since the index is spa spanning from 0 to capital N. And we know that there are only n possible residues or remainders for n. That is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on until n minus 1. Now, you can clearly see that uh, when we are going to take a uh, mod for these prefixes with n, that is uh, prefix uh, 0 mod n if uh, I take this prefix 0 mod n and similarly like prefix 1 mod n these is what we are going to take and so these are going to be n plus 1 values so since there are only n distinct possible values at least one is going to repeat and hence there is are going to be uh, there will exist two indexes l and r such that they will have same value of prefix that is prefix l mod n will be equal to prefix r mod n and that is what I have uh, claimed here and that is what I have proved here as well. That is there are n plus 1 values of prefix i and only n possible residues for n. So according to prison whole principle, the required segment, sub segment will always exist. And if you want to know what is pigeonhole whole principle is, then it simply states that uh, if n items are put into m containers with n greater than m, then at least one container must contain more than one item. And that is what is... Uh, the case with us as well and this is the definition for pigeonhole principle taken from wikipedia so now we can simply look at the algorithm for our solution we make a hash table of size n and we initialize it with minus one now we know that prefix zero is zero we initialize prefix zero as zero we initialize hash table zero to zero as well now we start from index one and iterate to n and we See, we compute prefix i as prefix i minus 1 plus ai mod n and we see if in our hash table prefix uh, the for the index prefix i if the hash table has the entry which is not equal to minus 1 we know that we have found an index which has the same value of prefix i mod n uh, with the previous index. So we make our l as hash table equal to hash table prefix i and we make our r as the current index that is i and we break out of the loop else if the hash table prefix i is minus 1 we simply initialize it to i and then we iterate from l plus 1 to r and print all the elements from uh, until that index so i think that is the solution for this thank you guys for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment on this video the next video is going to come soon thank you